treatment will see their lives improve due to a phenomenon called drug resistance. To help explain what this entails, we have Dr. Deogratius Semwanga, a senior scientist at the Medical Research Council, as well as uh, the Uganda Virus Research Institute. Good evening, sir, and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Good evening. Well, to begin with, uh, one of Uganda's targets derived from the World Health Organization has for 95% of those tested and found to be infected to be enrolled in antiretroviral therapies. How is Uganda faring in this regard? Yeah, so um, according to the His Excellency's speech uh, yesterday, and uh, he elaborately talked about the current status of the HIV epidemic, he talked about the history, what we're going through, the challenges, as well as the future. One key thing that came out from his speech was individuals who are not actually responding very well to treatment. And uh, the major cause of this is actually drug resistance. And this is the discussion we're having right now. Mm. And what brings about this? What brings about drug resistance? Yes. So HIV drug resistance essentially means individuals who are on treatment, but they're not responding to the drugs. So literally, their viral loads are increasing much as they're on treatment. Yeah. And there are so many causes for this. But the main cause is adherence. People are not taking their medications as prescribed by the, uh, the doctors. Mm. So what happens then if the person does not respond to a particular ARV drug? How do you handle this person? Exactly. So when a patient is not responding, first of all, we do a viral load test to see the levels of resistance or the levels of the virus that is in, in this patient. Mm. Once we have that, the clinician will assess and either see whether this patient is actually adhering to the treatment. But if they feel mm. that this patient needs testing further to see whether the virus is resistant, that is when we come in to test to see whether the virus is resistant to the treatment. So we test these individuals, we advise the clinicians mm. who can then eventually see the appropriate treatment. Hmm. Which, uh, is, it, is it known? Do we know the, uh, appropriate, the alternative options for those people that are unresponsive to the HIV drug? Yes. Once you do the uh, resistance testing, we already know. Is this patient responding to this treatment, this drug, and so on? And clinicians have very good guidelines on how to respond to whatever resistance they have. Mm. So is there hope for an HIV vaccine in the near future? This has been a question around for a very long time. The, 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 the hope is there. It is there, but HIV is very complicated, as you know. Mm. Yeah. OK. So what does the future of HIV treatment look like in this regard? The, the future is really very good. Mm. As long as patients adhere to the treatments, we have very good drugs. The drugs are working very well. The clinicians are doing very well. The treatment gui guidelines are very clear. So uh, as long as all those guidelines are being followed, everything will be fine. Now we do, as, as Uganda, we do have uh, a UNAIDS target of the 395s that we are supposed to meet before uh, 2035. Would you say we are on the journey to meet that target? Because according to um, the, the, the Ministry of Health's address to the, uh, the, World, the World AIDS Day, 1st December yesterday, she did say that the cases of HIV are actually high among women more than uh, they are men, and yet the deadline is drawing closer for that target. Yes. Uh, I think the, the future is there, and we can meet those, those targets, mm? the 95s, the 395s, people knowing their status, getting onto treatment, but also suppressing. We know what really works. What is very important is getting people together and also making sure that we put in all these interventions. As long as we have everybody coming together. We can put together these interventions, 
and we can meet those interventions, uh, the targets. When you say that you know what works, but we still do have cases of uh, you know, HIV going up, You've, you've seen in the news where a report was uh, made uh, that each day about 70 young people yeah. are between the ages of 15 and 24 are testing for, um, for HIV. How would you defend this? So I think we have several colleagues implementing partners who are addressing all these issues. They really know. Uh, and the good thing is they have identified these populations. Mm. It, it's a question of I identifying these populations, going into there, and really intensifying the prevention in those populations. Using what measures? There are so many. For instance? We all know the ABCs have been around for a very long time. Hmm? We have hmm, treatment, treatment as prevention in high-risk populations. All these interventions are really there. It is a question of implementing them. And are they working? Do you think they are working? They are. They are working. Hmm. But things slip through. The moment you keep quiet or you uh, stay back, things slip through. Hmm. But I think it is intensifying. Okay. Now the uptake of some of the preventive measures against HIV among high-risk populations seems to be low, yeah. uh, like you've highlighted. How do you think this can be best addressed? It is getting into the communities. Okay getting the binds, mm. uh, sensitizing mm, the benefits and so on. I think that is where the gap is. These things work, but we need to really intensify you know, knowledge among these populations, demystifying the myths and so on. Mm. I think that is where we should get. You know, you, when you've talked about the myths, uh, I'm reminded by, by what the president said during his uh, speech where he expressed concern that there is a higher fear of pregnancy uh, and yeah. other subtle issues rather than infection of HIV yeah. among the youth. Uh, do you think his, his uh, worries are justifiable? He's spot on. There are so many myths. <laughs> we need to demystify those myths. And this is where you people in communication, uh, uh, media houses need to come in to really de demystify these things. Mm. So have you, have you, are these some of the things that you have encountered with from where you sit? Exactly. So most of the research that we do, it is multidisciplinary. We have basic scientists, we have clinical trialists, we have social scientists who really get into mm, the populations to really explain what we are doing, the benefits and so on. It is very important. And in fact, when I was out here, I remember the importance of the media. The media is very important. We need to In reach classic. out. Mm. Exactly. We need to reach out to these communities to really tell them what we are doing, the benefits, and so on. Okay. Uh, well, Doctor, uh, I would like you to give us your parting shot in regards to what can be done for us to meet, first of all, the, 95, the 395s that you talked about, and also what can be done, or what can we achieve as we, you know, uh, move towards the target of ending HIV AIDS by 2030? I think when you look at the 95s, the three, first of all, we need to know our status. That is very important. Secondly, if you know your status, get treatment. And adhere to the treatment. And we shall be there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Doctor, for sharing with us. Well, that conversation.